to address their remarks through the chair. Senator Gallo, you have the call. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. And, uh, I rise to uh, make a contribution on the Social Security Administration Amendment continuation of Cashless Welfare Bill 2020. And I'd like to associate myself with that, that incredible um, speech from Senator McCarthy. If there's a speech that's going to convince other senators uh, to uh, vote no to this bill, um, that's the speech uh, to listen to and refer back to. Labor will be opposing this bill. The reasons that underpin our opposition to imposing the cashless debit card on communities without their informed consent or adequate consultation have been extensively canvassed in this place and through committee reports and contributions to debates such as those made just by, uh, then by Senator McCarthy. Indeed, senators from across the political spectrum have rightly found fault with the approach engendered in this and related bills over recent years. In fact, many of the concerns we've been flagging since the coalition government embarked on its rollout of the cashless debit card have regrettably been realised. And further to that, there is now an exhaustive base of evidence which has affirmed our opposition to measures in this bill. The income management regime the Morrison government is seeking to impose, in many cases on some of the most vulnerable and isolated social security recipients and communities in the country, with this legislation, has a number of irredeemable flaws. Put simply, it doesn't work, despite the government's continued but baseless assertions that it does. Thankfully, there are those in the coalition party room that recognise this, and we've heard comments uh, from um, the member for Bass this week. More than a decade has now passed since the Howard government's intervention in the Northern Territory and its accompanying welfare quarantining measures, and there is just no evidence that compulsory, broad-based income management works. The evidence suggests quite to the contrary. Not only has the cashless debit card and compulsory income management policies more generally been found wanting in their effectiveness, but as Labor members have been highlighting, there is actually evidence of significant harm. And it cannot go unsaid, in fact it should, must be at the forefront of our consideration of this bill, that this legislation is racially discriminatory. We know that more than two-thirds of the people who will face increasingly severe restrictions and controls under this bill would be First Nations Australians. In fact, half of all welfare recipients impacted by this legislation would be First Nations people in the Northern Territory. What's abundantly clear with the Morrison government's wholesale and flagrant disregard of the publicly available evidence is that its cashless debit card policy is firmly, if not exclusively, based on ideology. And we see that playing out here this week, that this bill is the one that's most important to this government. It's the cashless debit card on their program this week in the Senate that, that is their priority bill, and I think that speaks everything about this government. It certainly cannot claim to be by supported by the data or the lived experience of Australians who have been subjected to it. It should be noted, too, that this bill is meaningfully different to others we've had before us. It rushes to make the cashless debit card permanent in the existing trial sites, rather than seeking to extend the trial period, as the government had originally sought to do. That key difference betrays another motivation implicit in this bill. The government is determined to proceed with their scarcely concealed plan to roll this card out right across the country, irrespective of the evidence, and with it make life harder for millions of Social Security recipients. Anyone who is in receipt of Social Security in this country uh, should be worried by this bill. Make no mistake, that's clearly the direction this government is headed, or how else we account for the Morrison government making the decision to forge ahead with this bill in the way that it has done. The minister herself admitted at Senate estimates that she had not even read the $2.5 million evaluation of the program before deciding to make the cashless debit card permanent. That's an evaluation the government itself commissioned. The very same report senators in this place have not seen, despite being asked to vote on this bill today. Clearly, it is not, ev it is not evidence that's motivating the approach from the Morrison government. And if that's not sufficiently telling about the government's true intention, at estimates we discovered the establishment of the so-called CDC Technology Working Group. That group includes the likes of ANZ Bank, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, National Australia Bank and Westpac, as well as Coles, Woolworths, Metcash, FPOS and Australia Post. 
It is not difficult to deduce the scale of the government's ambition of a future CDC rollout with groups of that size involved. I mean, why would they be involved unless there were greater plans afoot? Regrettably, this is also another case of, of movement and action in lieu of substance and delivery from the Prime Minister. It is a pattern Australians are growing wearily familiar with. The Prime Minister attempts to chalk up a win, grab a headline that on the face of it might suggest meaningful action, and then quickly move on to the next announcement. If it helps shore up support internally by appealing to the ideological biases of the hard right wing of his party, then all the better to do it. But what we have learned— Senator Gallagher, uh, that is an imputation of an improper motive, which I will ask you to withdraw. Um, I will withdraw according to your Thank ruling. Thank you. You have the call. Uh, but what we've learned and what Australians are quickly discovering is that once the sugar hit of a headline has dissipated, any close review of those policies expose that the chronically under-deliver or are even counterproductive, as is the case with this legislation. And that's certainly part of the Labor's opposition to this bill. It's also that it's an enormous missed opportunity, a classic case of opportunity cost. And that before factoring in that too many of the people and communities this bill would impact most heavily were experiencing long-term or intergenerational disadvantage well before the pandemic arrived on our shores. And yet the Morrison government's focus in this final parliamentary week of the year is not evidence-based policy that empowers or supports some of the most vulnerable in our community. Instead, it's seeking, with unjustified haste, to push through another ideologically motivated program. I'd like to turn to an issue um, that I have uh, alluded to uh, earlier, and that's about the bill not being supported by evidence. Analysis from a broad range of specialists, many of whom contributed to the recent Senate inquiry, have provided compelling evidence that when they've compulsorily imposed, the cashless debit card and similar schemes have not worked. Professor Drees, director from the Centre for Aboriginal Economic Policy Research at the ANU, succinctly characterised the evidence supporting both the cashless debit card and the basics card as, I quote, flimsy and largely anecdotal, not rigorous and reliable. The evidence does not stack up. On the contrary, he asserted that 13 years of compulsory income management practices in the Northern Territory had produced a very large amount of evidence that has shown that it has had, and I quote again, almost no positive impact. These findings are supported by the University of South Australia's recent independent analysis of the CDC trial in Sejuna, South Australia. With explicit reference to the issue of gambling and substance abuse amongst welfare recipients, which is often proffered by proponents of compulsory scheme as justification for intervention, UniSA's independent analysis determined the CDC policy had no substantive effect on the available measures for the targeted behaviours of gambling or intoxicant abuse. We've also heard from the preeminent experts in addiction that the approach championed through this bill by the government is completely wrong-headed, particularly its focus on compulsion, rather than employing proven methods which leverage voluntary involvement and positive reinforcement. The Royal Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatrists stated in their submission that there was not clinical evidence to support the CDC. We are concerned at the continued pursuit of this policy against the advice of addiction specialists. More than 50 years of psychological research shows that positive reinforcement strategies are more effective than punitive strategies in bringing around behavioural change. So why is the government proceeding in the face of this evidence? It's especially be bewildering when you couple not only the highly questionable effectiveness of the program against its costs. Dr Luke Greenacre's more recent research with the University of South Australia examined the change in targeted behaviours following the introduction of the scheme in South Australian trial area, finding no statistically significant improvement in any behaviour. Dr Greenacre's research suggests the CDC offers marginal, if any, return at all on government investment. We found no substantive impact on measures of gambling, drug and alcohol abuse, crime or emergency department presentations. So there you have it from the experts, but this government isn't listening to them. The Liberal member for Bass, uh, Bridget Archer, Archer MP, has spoken out against the government's cashless debit uh, welfare cards, saying 
that there isn't enough evidence to justify the associated harm the program causes. In her contribution in the other place, the member for Bass said, and I quote, I have been a recipient of government assistance myself at different times in my life, and I can understand the stress that so many forced onto this card would feel. The rhetoric that surrounds social security and systems like income management plays into the very worst of human nature. We're essentially inviting people to look at their fellow Australians as something other or less than. Whenever you approach a human program by inciting shame and guilt, you have already lost those you are seeking to help. I'd like to associate my, myself with those thoughtful remarks and reflections brought out of her personal experience and which mirror my own. Ms Archer's dissent has also been supported by the Liberal member for Monash, Russell Broadbent, who has registered his concern about the bill, specifically questioning the merit in singling out communities for a cashless debit card. I certainly hope that members of the Senate crossbench, and indeed whether there are any members of the Senate coalition in this place who are listening to these contributions and listening to the evidence, and will have the courage of their convictions to join us in opposing this legislation. Because let's be very clear about what's happening here. The Morrison government are seeking, through this bill, to permanently establish the punitive cashless debit card, despite knowing it does not work, despite knowing it unjustly and disproportionately targets First Nations Australians, despite having to, f to adequately consult with affected communities, despite having failed to invest in job creation, housing or adequate community services, despite knowing this bill is yet another step in a barely concealed plan to roll out this regime on welfare recipients right across the country, and despite members of their own the government's own members having conceded in parliament that all of this is true. And why is this bill the government's number one priority this week? Why is this the Prime Minister's number one priority? To impose the cashless web, um, debit card disproportionately targeting First Nations Australians? That seriously is his number one issue this week. When we have so many people unemployed, so many businesses struggling, so many families trying to make ends meet, shouldn't that be the focus? But no, it's this one. And at the same time, we have the Prime Minister saying, we prefer to let Australians make decisions about how they spend their money, and he's been saying that all week, then turns around with legislation like this, which takes that right away from, from those uh, communities where this is going to be imposed on them permanently and then rolled out across the country. So he says one thing to one group of people in this country and then acts this way towards some of the most vulnerable, isolated and marginal communities in this country. Instead of working with them, listening to them, you know, God help us if you actually listen and ask and work with communities about how to support them and respond to some of the challenges that they may be experiencing in their homes and their uh, communities. Uh, we've got it right here. We won't listen to uh, the experts. We won't listen to um, the report that we've commissioned. We won't even read it. We'll spend $2.5 million of taxpayers' funds on commissioning a report that the minister herself has acknowledged she doesn't read before she takes this decision to permanently impose this on a number of communities in Australia with a long-term view of rolling it out across the country. This is the priority of this government. It's mean, it's nasty, it's playing to base politics, and they won't listen because this is exactly what they want to do. They want to, all the way to the next election, they seek to marginalise, disenfranchise, demean, in the eyes of other Australians, the rights of some of the most vulnerable communities in this country. The Labor Party will not be a part of it, and we will call it out, and we will call it out all day, and I know many other senators in this place will call it out too. And like Senator McCarthy said, I urge the crossbench 
Do not be bullied into voting for this bill because the government has got itself into a problem about timing because they've mismanaged their own program. Don't help them out. They don't deserve it, and the communities that are going to have this imposed on, it, on them don't deserve it either.